Just John the Looney there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Welcome back. There's, there's your floor. mark. There's your mark. Floor. <laughs> um, Fred could attach it to the floor. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> back. Thank you. Yeah. What, Pierre Luc? Uh, Having gone through this before, I know we were talking to the LA guys and they were pretty excited about playing their former team, but is it a little bit different for you on how to handle this emotionally and everything else that's going on? Uh, no, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just the same sport. Um, it's just a hockey game. You know, obviously, before the game, after the game, seeing the guys, um, you know, just being here right now, I wanted to skate to kind of, I mean, I haven't been on the away side in three or four years, so um, I kind of wanted to, to see that. To, and not happen before the game, but um, yeah, I've been seeing the guys at warm up. I'm sure it's gonna be gonna feel weird, um, maybe first face off, stuff like that. But then you get out there, and the 60 minutes is just another 60 minutes. Um, you know, I know for a lot of people, or you know, they might think that it's it's a bigger game or anything, but it's a two game season, it's two points, it's the same thing. Um, you know, we're just trying to win, and after the game, then we'll be back to. Well, we know there'll be at least two people cheering for you in the stands tonight. Right? Yeah, minimum two, hopefully a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> what do you yeah, think you get? Pro probably won't be as loud, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I'll have to. Yeah, my, my parents are coming to the game, so minimum two people, hopefully two. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're passionate fans here, and um, you know that's what I loved about coming here. That's when I got traded here. That's what I was excited to see you know, the passion of the fans. Obviously, the first year was COVID. We didn't see anybody, but but then after that. Um, you know, last year making the playoffs, seeing the whiteout, something that I used to watch when I was young on TV. It was, uh, it was really special to see, and you know, I'm sure they'll give their team energy tonight. And, and uh, yeah, it's just a passionate fan base. And what do you think you'll hear from them? Uh, I think you guys will think, think it's like booze, like B O O, but I, I'm going to go with D U B. So it'll be, I'll turn it into a positive. Yeah. Um, for those who maybe wonder, why didn't you want to stay? Sorry? Why didn't you want to stay? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said uh, before, there's a lot of positives in my time here. Um, you know, the people I met, um, you know, obviously being in the city with my parents, um, people in the city, fans, everything. There's a lot of positives, but, you know, it, it was at a point in my career and in my life where it's, you know, I have to look further into just one year. If I was on a five year deal, then it would have been five years. And, um, you know, it's just the timing, the contract, um, the situation. You know, I have to think myself in you know, year one, but also year eight of a contract, and um, I felt like LA was, was a great fit, and I enjoyed my time in Winnipeg. Like I said, if, if I had a five-year deal coming out of Columbus and Winnipeg, then it would have been five years. It's just the timing of it um, all right. So what about LA? What does it give you that maybe Winnipeg and maybe even Columbus could not? Yeah, um, I, it's not necessarily what it can give me. I just, when I looked at it, um, you know, we, when we talked to LA, the, Team, the fit, um, you know, everything that comes with it. I felt like, you know, it was, it was the right decision for me to make. And um, like I said, nothing but positives in Winnipeg. Um, like I've said before, you know, people tend to think that there is he didn't like it or he didn't do. It, but it's just, you know, as your life goes on, you sign an eight-year deal. You have to think of the eight years of that contract. And for me, it just felt like it was was it. Pierre, do you feel like? Uh I guess if you were to sort of separate yourself from the equation and look at the deal as a whole, that this could turn into one of those hockey trades that benefits everybody. The both teams seem to have gotten what they wanted and needed. Yeah, I mean, the reality of it is, is guys go in free agency and they, get, they leave for nothing. Um, you know, the Jets got three good players um, from, from the Kings, and you, know, you look at that roster now, and, um, I, I haven't really followed much, but I'm sure they're doing well. Um, I'm sure they're fitting in. I'm sure they're getting, to get, they're getting to know the guys. So. Um, you know, I'm sure. I'm, I think the Jets fans are happy that they got that in return instead of, of nothing. Um, I think those guys will help the team for now and in the future. And um, I wish them nothing but the best. But yeah, it's it's, uh, it's just how it goes sometimes in the business. Um, you know, I'm happy the Jets got I'm sure what they what they wanted out of it. How important was it for you to at least give Chevy a, a short list that he could deal with teams so that the Jets wouldn't be put in a potentially even more difficult situation? Yeah, I mean, we worked with the team um, you know, that my agent and Chevy communicated, I think, well with each other um, to try to, to make something work. Like I said, you know, every once in a while you see a guy just leave and the team doesn't get anything out of it. Um, that's not the situation I wanted. To, uh, that's not how I wanted it to be. So my agent and Chevy did, I think, a good job of finding a right fit and the right uh, return for Winnipeg. And like I said, I'm, I'm sure they're, they're happy over there with what they got.
Did you take notice of uh, Hellebuck and Shifley re-upping long-term there? Yeah, the yeah. yeah, I was happy for them. Um, you know, when I saw the news, I texted both of them. Um, I'm sure I'll see them uh, after the game, or even if I get to talk, just say congrats and warm up. But yeah, I mean, it's it's good for the fans, good for the city. Um, you know, they're going to go down as two Winnipeg Jet greats, especially 2.0. Um, but yeah, I mean, two great players, great people. You're happy whenever somebody um, that you go along with signs a contract like that, and, and is, that means they're happy. So um, I was, I was uh, very thrilled for both of them. Coach Bonus told us yesterday that he tried hard to convince you to stay. He talked to you a lot. Uh, how did you handle those conversations? Yeah, it was tough. I mean, Bones I respect immensely. Um, from the moment he got there, I, I, I never played for him or um, didn't know much about him. But from day one of training camp until the end of the year, um, there's nothing but respect. Getting to know him on and off the ice was great. He's a great person. Um, you know, he's you can see a family man in him, and, and you, you, any player can appreciate that. And um, you know, those conversations. Um, Tried to be as, as direct and as honest with each other as we could, and um, you know, his uh, you know, it wasn't easy because, like I said, when you respect somebody so much, um, to have the, the honest conversations with them uh, isn't always easy, but it was very, very much appreciated. Looking back, how do you think you, everybody knowing you wanted that you didn't want to stay long term? How do you think that affected the room? Uh, looking back, yeah, no, I think, I think in, in hockey, every year there's guys that I mean. Every team has guys one year contracts or one year left on their contracts or two years left or whatever. Um, everybody's goal is to, to win a Stanley Cup, and I think during my time in Winnipeg, I, I gave my all to, to win the to win the Stanley Cup. Um, obviously, we, we didn't. Last year ended um, in a disappointing way, but I think when when you're in a dressing room, whether a guy has an eight year deal or a one year deal, if you go out there and practice and play and, and you're trying to win, then it, the contracts don't really matter. It's just the effort and, and the respect they have for each other. What's the transition been like so far? New system, new city, all those things. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been easy. Um, you know, obviously still working. So some things like just uh, I say like automatic stuff that you don't have to think about um, that comes with time um, with your line mates and, and everybody's habits out there. But um, the coaching staff, the players, everybody's been extremely helpful in, in making that uh, uh, that transition be uh, very easy. And you know, whether it's talking with them in the dressing room, away from the rink. Video or anything, they've been uh, they've been really helpful for me. And even the trip to Australia, I think, uh, helped a lot too. What's it been like to be around a guy like Kopitar and Phil, a guy that you know a little bit now, trying to know a little bit more? Yeah, uh, Phil, I knew a little bit. Uh, just a French guy, you kind of see each other in the summer once in a while. Um, but Kopi was one of the players. I don't want to make him sound old, but when I was young, uh, younger, uh, I, I'd watch, and you know, he plays I think such a, a great game up and down the ice um, in both ways. When you look at him play, I knew what kind of player he was, but seeing it in practice, seeing it on a consistent basis, seeing it in games, um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's such a great player. So you're, you're never too old to learn, and I'm trying to learn as much as I can from him and everybody uh, at Justin. And how do you hope to be remembered by this fan base? I know it's a short amount of time here, but what's your goal on that front? Uh, hopefully, um, good memories. I mean, like I said, I, I gave it my all um, when I was here. The first year, not, I mean, it felt like I was in Winnipeg, but without the fans, it didn't feel the same because you know, when you get traded to, to the Winnipeg Jets, the first thing that comes to mind is playing in front of a passionate fan base. So um, you know, I, I enjoyed my time here. I enjoyed playing in front of these fans. I enjoyed the whiteout last year. Um, you know, I have nothing but good things to say about Winnipeg. So Guys, we'll take two more, uh, and then we'll straight Hopefully, to the uh, they have nothing but good memories, even though you know, I, I'm here now. Um, I respect these fans in this city immensely. So first few, go ahead. Thinking about which eight years these are, from roughly 25 to 33, I think. Does any family planning in your part come into some of this? <laughs> I try to, yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's a, as of right now, uh, I'm more of a day-to-day -day guy. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you, you never know when, when things like that are going to happen. And it's, I tried as much as I can to think about the whole eight years, but like I said, being a day-to-day -day guy, um, it's not always easy to project. And, whether that's in a year, two years, three years. I mean, eventually, hopefully. But um, but for now, I'm just concentrating on, on one thing at a time. First first few shifts today, if someone's going to take a, a run at you from the inside, <laughs> who do you predict that would be? <laughs> oh, uh, I go with an underdog, probably Nick Ehlers. No? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys know. You guys know. <laughs> 55, uh, 55 yeah, yeah, down yeah. on Saturday. Oh, yeah, I saw that too. So uh, I'm going to have to have my head up. But, um, yeah, maybe, I mean, yeah, maybe Dilly. He's uh, 
but I, I probably wouldn't mess with him too much. So, uh, but yeah, it'll be, I'm sure it'll be fun and, and weird at the same time out there. Tonight. And that first time you're in on the four check is just, you have to almost tell yourself, okay, I'm allowed to really hit this guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I've, you know, playing against Columbus the first time was a little different because half the team was different from, from when I played them. Because the COVID year we didn't play Columbus, and then the next year feels like I think there was like 12 guys that were gone. Um, but then this team is fresh, and it's mostly all the same guys. So uh, whether it's Schmitty, JMO, or anybody on the four check, it's I'm sure in warm up it's going to be really weird. I'm going to have a few uh, few laughs, but um, yeah, as the game goes on, it'll, um, it'll get more and more normal, and then when the game's over, it's back to back to just seeing them as friends. Enjoy. Thank you. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks.